Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I am going to show you how to create some fabulous collage paper in multiple layers of yellow, orange, and orangey red for a koi fish collage. So if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. Welcome to the studio. So today I am working on creating some orange yellow paper for a koi fish lesson that is coming to my Patreon page. So the first thing that I need to do is create the papers because I have an underpainting of koi fish ready to go. But what I want to do is create papers that have black spots on them and the right orange and um, yellow colors. And that's not something that I have in my stash right now. So I'm actually going to create a specific collage paper for this koi fish lesson. So I'm using my 9 by 12 rice paper, um, Yasutomo rice paper or sketch paper pad. And this is important because I'm going to be soaking color through the back. I'm going to be gel printing on the front and then soaking color through the back. And only rice paper will do that. Your typical art paper or your copy paper or your basic papers are not going to soak color all the way through. The rice paper is very highly absorbent. And that's why I love it for collage because it glues down beautifully because the absorbency of it um, really takes the glue and then it glues down flat. There's never any wrinkles or bubbles or cockling when I use this paper for my collages. Also, this is a sturdy rice paper. So when I soak that color through the back, it's not going to fall apart. A lot of rice papers that you buy online can be very thin like tissue. And when you try to gel print the front and soak color through the back and do a lot of layers on them, they'll either stick to the plate or they'll tear because they're so thin. So this is a very durable, strong, highly absorbent rice paper. So it's great for this technique and it's also great for using in collage. So I'm going to take out two sheets because I'm going to have prints and ghost prints and it's going to be, uh, hopefully I can create two full sheets of paper for my koi fish. So the first step that I'm going to do, the colors that I'm using, by the way, it's very hard to see these colors uh, because they have been, they and the plate are well loved. So what I've got here is pyrrole orange, cadmium red, uh, I mean, sorry, cadmium yellow, medium, dairy light yellow, and pyrrole red light. So that's an orangey red, a golden yellow, a basic yellow, and an orange. So I'm going to start with my lightest color. So if I'm going to arrange these in order of light to dark, I'm going to go from the cadmium to the dairy light to the pyrrole orange to the pyrrole red light. That's a natural progression from light to dark. I don't really want my, um, my paper to be too much of the red tone. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go, um, sparingly with this at the end. I really want to kind of keep it in like an orangey, orangey koi fish feeling. So of course, the first thing I always do is start with a light colored solid. So I'm going to put out the cadmium yellow and roll that out on my plate. My plate, like I said, is well loved and dirty. So we'll see what we get. The first print of yellow may end up with artifact uh, in it from my previous printing session, but that's the beauty of the gel plate. So I'm going to set the brayer aside and I'm going to put the smooth side. There's a smooth side and a rough side to this paper. I'm going to put, and you can feel it very clearly. You can feel the difference, but the smooth side is facing up towards you in the pad and it's the smooth side that's going to go down onto the plate. So we're going to just get a nice light colored solid here. And despite how dirty that plate looks, maybe it's all on the other side. We got a little bit, but that's fine. You know, that's going to create some interesting texture and pattern. And so now I've got this nice uh, cadmium yellow sheet. So I've, I'm going to be incorporating two of my new patterns for layering stencils. This one is called Mesh. That's a really fun, good pattern that I thought would be kind of like a fish. And then this one is called Drizzle. And it, it kind of reminds me of water. So I thought that would be good for the fish as well. So, so drizzle and mesh. And they're part of my new collection of stencils with joggles called Patterns for Layering. There are many other patterns in that series that are um, small to medium openings that are meant to be layered with each other or layered with my stencils and masks that have large openings like the Georgia O'Keeffe stuff. Okay, so then I'm going to take the the dairy light yellow, which is probably going to be very subtle on the cadmium, but I think it is darker, uh, 
slightly dark uh, darker enough to show up and yeah you can see that this is a much more golden yellow now if you don't have dairy light you can add a wee bit of the pyrrole orange to the cadmium yellow and you'll basically get this you can always blend colors um, on the plate if you don't have every color so i would just take the first yellow the cadmium yellow and add a tiny bit of the pyrrole orange and you'll probably get something very similar to the dairy light so we're going to put the mesh mask down and we're going to take that yellow sheet and print and i should have done a, a full solid on our second sheet because i always work on a light colored solid but i'm sure we can figure something out okay so I'm going to look before I pull it up and I'm using really a lot of my fingertips with th this line of stencils because the openings are small to medium. So your fingertips are going to help you get that paper down in between all the spaces. And that's another thing I really like about the rice paper is it's very, it's very malleable. So it will easily go down in between all the spaces of a small stencil because it's a nice flexible paper. Okay, so here we go. Look at that. That's beautiful first layer. And now we've got the ghost print. So what I'm going to do with the ghost print is rather than transfer it immediately, I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to put the lighter cadmium yellow over it and then we're going to print it onto the second sheet so we can be making ghost prints and prints on two sheets. It does not take long for that to dry. So I'm going to put that yellow out. I think that this may still be a little wet in the brayer, so I'm going to roll that off. Not too much, but I don't want that this yellow to be made darker so that we lose that pattern. Okay, so we're keeping the second yellow nice and light with a clean brayer. And we're putting that over the ghost print. And then we're taking the second sheet, smooth side, down to the plate. And we should get a print that looks very similar to the first one. Only the ghost print is typically, uh, well, first of all, it's going to be reverse, uh, but it's also typically um, softer because some of the paint is stuck to the back of the stencil. So we don't get a full amount of that paint. So it's going to be a little bit of a different, lighter print. So here we go. So it's more subtle than the first one. You can see that definitely. But you can also still see the pattern. It's just definitely more subtle because a certain amount of the paint sticks to the back of the stencil. So, but now we've got two sheets that we can be working with. So we'll create two sheets of koi fish collage paper. So the next color is the pyrrol orange. And we're going to put that down and roll that out in a nice thin layer. I didn't bother cleaning the brayer off because a little bit of golden yellow in the orange is not going to make much of a difference. And now I'm going to come in with the drizzle stencil and I'm going to print the drizzle stencil on the ghost print page. So I'm going to alternate my ghost prints and my first prints so I can get a different effect. So again, with my fingertips getting in between all those small spaces and having a peek to make sure you got good contact before you dismount the paper is always a good idea because with these little openings, sometimes you miss a spot with your fingerprint with your fingers and you don't want to remove it from the plate until you get a real good print. So I'm always having a look and I think that's pretty good. I'm looking to make sure that the paint is all picked up in the open spaces. Okay. So here's the drizzle print. So you can see that's kind of feeling like a koi fish, but we need more layers. So now I'm going to lift this up and I've got my ghost print and I'm going to put that over that first print. And wow, that's a lot of orange because it is the reverse. So all the little openings on the first one, but all the paint that was outside of the openings on the second one. So now we've got one that's heavy orange as well as one that's still quite yellow. So we've still got some orange on the plate and now I'm, which is no big deal. I love that when it all mixes together. So on this heavy one, we're going to go to the red, but on the other one, I'm going to stay a little lighter. So this is the pyrrole red light. And if I felt that this was too dark, of course I could add a little pyrrole orange to it to sort of lighten it up a bit because it's pretty red, but there are areas in the koi fish that are going to graduate from orange to red. So 
I'm going to come back to the drizzle, I mean to the mesh, and put that over that ghost print of the drizzle. So, now how I'm going to add the black spots to this paper for the koi fish is really fun and something that I'm going to share on Patreon in a video form, but I will tell you that I am going to paint my toes with black gesso and then I am going to step on this paper. And the prints formed by my toes in the black gesso will become the black spots on the koi fish. I love doing this because it puts a little bit of me into the, into the koi fish and also your toes are going to be all kinds of different shapes of circles. Not perfect circles, not like bubble wrap or, or a bubble blast stencil that has perfect circles. Those, your toes are all going to be at different angles and different shapes and they're going to make really organic shapes for the koi fish. So that's going to be fun, and I'm going to do that with this paper as a last step, and I'm going to do that as part of my Patreon lesson. Wow, look at that. That's fantastic. Look at the layers and layers of color in there. I love it. Okay, so now we've got a ghost print, and on this one, rather than print this straight forward, I'm going to print this in different directions. So I'm going to keep moving my sheet around and just shift so I can get sort of a fractured version of this pattern. So I'm just rotating and picking up the ghost print and moving it around and so this is a whole different way to print the mesh stencil instead of straightforward. So we kind of fracture the pattern and it looks a little less uniform than here. So now we've got some of this stuff left and I feel like we could come back with yellow on top of this and see what happens. So let's use the dairy light yellow because that's sort of the golden yellow and we're gonna put that over the remaining pyrrole red and I've still got pyrrole red in my brayer so it's making it a little bit more orange than I had hoped and I'm gonna come back with the drizzle and I'm going to put that over this one first so we can use the ghost print, which is heavy coverage on that one, because I think the small openings on the first one would probably not show up as well. So we're going to put the small openings on this sheet and then the ghost print on that heavy coverage sheet. So let's see how this dairy lied yellow stands up over the dark. It's a little hard to see, but I feel like it is definitely adding texture. Of course, yellow is a lighter color than the red-orange, so it's not going to show up as well, but it will have a certain amount of effect. I think you can see it in there. It's hard to discern exactly what this layer was, but it is adding depth. So now we're going to lift this up, and we've got that heavy coverage ghost print, and we're going to put that over this one. And I'm going to flip it and see if I can get some more. Let's see if I can pick up some more paint. And you can tell that that has toned back that red a little bit with the yellow on top. So this time I'm going to come back with the cadmium yellow, the lighter yellow, and see if I can get that to stand up at all. And I'm going to roll the brayer out on a clean piece of paper so I can make sure that I don't tint that yellow. Even rolling it out on a clean piece of paper, there's still a little, there's still a certain amount of orange that was still on the plate. Okay, so that's pretty light yellow. And we're going to come back with the mesh. Now you can see that it is the layering that creates the beauty of these papers. I'm always going to go for three or four layers. That's how you get really rich textured patterned collage paper with a lot of depth is to do a lot of layers and these stencils these patterns for layering stencils are really great for that 
the key to beautiful collage paper like this is layer, 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 layer. You've got to do three, four, five layers to get those complex patterns and patterns that look like beautiful texture, such as what we're doing for koi fish. So when you think you're done, do one more layer with, like I said, with each other or with stencils and masks with larger openings. So, oh, I love that. So the cadmium yellow, that lighter cadmium yellow, even though it's a lighter color, there's a, a little bit of opaque quality to it, just a little bit. But you can see um, that with it spilled over this container, you can't completely see through it. See, there's the half of the golden logo, but you can see that it it is it is a little bit opaque. I mean, so it is going to show up uh, to a certain degree over a darker color. So here we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Wow. Now we're really getting some koi fish color. And again, I'm going to take the ghost print of that one and put it, this time I'll put it straight on this one, but I could fracture it and move it around again. But I think I've got a pretty good fractured pattern underneath there. And here I've got another great koi fish color. I'm going to flip that and press it again, see if I can pick up more of that yellow paint. So here we go. We've got two really nice multi-layered pieces of paper that are going to be great for koi fish. Now, I've got this one. It, they're kind of very similar in value. They're great two different colors, but they're very similar in value. So I'm going to come back in on half of this sheet and darken it down with the pyrrole red light because in my shadows on my koi fish i'm going to want a little bit of a darker color so i'm going to leave the yellow in the brayer it's going to lighten it up a little bit let's put this over the whole thing and we'll do half on each sheet so here's a tip of a nice way that you can darken down a whole print i'm just putting out a thin layer of that pyrrole red light i'm just going to take that and print it right over part of this sheet just straight up and you see that now I have automatically a darker version of this. I don't have to create a whole new print. I can just put a layer of dark over and because of the translucency of the paint, I still see all the patterns. So let's also do that on part of this sheet and I'll be creating myself instantly some darker paper for the darker areas of my koi fish. So now I've just created myself a bit of darker to go with my other papers, my other tones of yellow and orange. Okay, so now that we're done with the gel plate, our next step is going to be to flood some blue color through the back of the paper so that when I tear it, I'm going to get blue edges. So that way I can tear the orange paper to have a blue edge where the fish meets the water. And that'll give me sort of a soft edge feeling and make the fish feel like it's in the water because it's going to have a bit of blue on the edges. That really works out well for the koi fish. So I'm using manganese blue. I've got a sheet of a shiny palette paper here and I'm going going to um, flip the paper over. I've got some water and this is a, a process of just using water and the fluid acrylic manganese blue. You have to get the blue color um, watered down enough to soak through the rice paper, which doesn't take too much water, but more than just straight paint. So we're just going to brush that watery manganese blue on the back of the orange paper and it is going to soak through so that when we tear the paper we're going to get those blue edges because this blue is going to go right through the center of the paper so i'm adding more water to my brush as i brush this on the back and this is not just something that I use for koi fish. Um, I like to do this technique with a lot of the gel printed papers that I make so that when I tear them, they have colored edges. You can either make the edges the same color. So if I wanted to have orange paper that tore with orange edges, I could make uh, orange or yellow through the back. Um, or uh, sometimes I'll do when I do green for 
landscape, I'll tear, I'll put orange on the back. So I'll tear my green and I'll get orange edges. So you can do a lot of different combinations of color on the back and on the front. So I've got this pretty much soaked through. I'm going to flip it over. And again, that's why I love this rice paper because even soaked with water, I can still handle it and manage it. And it's not ripping or falling apart like tissue paper. And you can see that the blue does not come through the front very much, if at all. And I'm just going to take my paper towel and wipe it off a little bit. So now I've got my orange yellow collage paper with the blue back. And this is wet, but I'm just going to show you that when I tear this, especially when I tear it at an angle, I'm going to get that beautiful blue edge that will make the edge of my koi fish to the water. So that is the beauty of this durable, highly absorbent rice paper. We can tear and get a beautiful blue edge and it doesn't affect the orange yellow paper on the front that was gel printed and like i said you just use your paper towel wipe a little bit of it off and there you have it and you want to let it dry on this type of palette paper um or you can put it right on your non-stick craft mat tabletop surface this way on the palette paper i can set it aside and i can still use my surface but if you were not going to use your non-stick craft mat you can do it right here you just want to make sure that you allow this very wet painted paper to dry on a plasticky surface because it'll stick so when this is dry i'm gonna it's gonna peel right off of this shiny um palette paper you could also put it on a trash bag um, but you want to make sure or part um freezer paper something like that you want to make sure you put it on something that when it dries you can peel it off because it will stick the wet paint so once this dries i am going to paint my toes and walk across it with black gesso and then i'll have my black spots and my koi fish paper with my blue edges and come on over to my patreon page and check out the lesson on how i will apply this paper to create realistic koi fish Happy Friday. Thanks for being here. I'm excited to say that this rice paper pad featured in this week's lesson is on sale at joggles.com for 25% off this week. And I also want to remind you that my patterns for layering stencil collection is also available on joggles.com and all the products used in this video are linked below. And lastly, if you want to check me out on Patreon, that link is going to be in the upper right hand corner and it is a month to month subscription. So come on over for a month and see how you like it. You'll have immediate access to all archived material going back to May of 2020. One lesson published every week. You have all that video tutorial available to you immediately and you can stay for 30 days or stay for 30 months. Anyway, thanks again and I'll see you back here next week. Thank you.